some of the earliest work I ever did with Ellsworth in the late 70s was wood. And so there's a long tradition of sourcing wood with him and uh, doing wood pieces. We had done a redwood totem that is smaller than the one that we're doing now for the chapel. And we went to a mill near Santa Cruz, California, and they had some large slabs of redwood available. And we picked a couple of those and made totems. So now we're going to do redwood again. So that's the first mill I went to, and they don't have any anymore. It's very hard now uh, to find old growth redwood. We found a mill in Crescent City, California, and they had it. And it's interesting why they have it. These logs are from original cutting of the redwood forest in the 1890s and such. They had a little ravine or a, a, a canyon that they wanted to cross. They wouldn't build a bridge, they'd just roll logs into the, into the ravine until it came up level and then put tracks across and go. Well, these logs eventually got washed down and buried downstream. And so they're recovering these and they're still great. So we got two. Basic is an insurance policy, not knowing what we would find. Same with the stone, you, you slab it and you find things inside that could possibly make the uh, piece unusable for a totem. And the wood isn't perfect, you know, it's not without inclusions and things, knots and things, but uh, this doesn't preclude it from being usable with Ellsworth. Uh, it doesn't have to be clear heartwood. And so the wood has to air dry over years actually of time, very slowly, so that the inside dries in theory kind of equal to the outside of the wood drying. If the inside stays really wet, expanded, and the outside dries and shrinks, you get big cracks called checking, and you can, it can basically destroy the piece of wood. We put it on a very large gantry mill, it's called, and it's a very big, robust machine, and then very precise, within thousandths of an inch, and then we surface off one side of the log, which is very rough cut from the mill, get that flat, look at it, and if it's good, we stop, because it's just like on the stone. You don't want to cut in and find something that uh, is a surprise. And then we flip that over. Now we have a perfectly flat surface, and then we start cutting on that side to bring it down to the net thickness. So once it's slabbed out net thickness, then we cut the profile. And these are coastal redwoods, the tallest trees in the planet. And you can tell by the tightness of the grain we're talking about wood that's hundreds of years old. Yeah, this is hundreds very, of years. 